Hello Rabbags, it's Jade. Welcome to an Assassin's Creed Tips and Tricks Guide. I'm sure you've probably seen plenty of videos lately. Boomstick Gaming's probably got one of the better ones with advanced tips showing you how to do a lot with ranged weapons. But there are other places to go and get some and there's definitely a lot to be talking about. One of them places is Reddit. So go and check out the thread that's on the Assassin's Creed Valhalla page and I'll leave the link for it in the comment section. And this is where the majority of these ones came from. So big shout out to them. Always try and give credit where I can to everyone that contributed to that thread. I've chucked in a couple of my own as well and definitely hopefully this will help you out. If it does make sure you like and subscribe and let me actually show you how these tips work. Make sure that if you want some quick nice easy adrenaline you go back to your home in Raventhorpe and you go ahead and assassinate these poor straw dudes. This will quickly refill all your bars of your adrenaline. There are four skill points that give you extra adrenaline shots. So super handy, particularly against higher level enemies using this in battles. So before you go off and try a zealot, make sure you refill. All right, so maybe not necessarily a tip or a trick, but it's pretty cool nevertheless. If you want to get on your horse even quicker than normal, go ahead and press the call button, but this time don't let go. You'll swing up onto his saddle much quicker. If you want to save more time, don't forget you can also loot while you're on your horse. You can even gather iron ore just by kicking away as well. It's a little bit more fiddly, but it does save you having to get back on and off. We've all done it right, you've taken a jump that you didn't mean to do. We'll go ahead and press the attack just before you land, the heavy one, and you should about survive that fall. Let's see if we can find something a little bit bigger to put that truly to the test. You do have to do it right before though, so don't go ahead and hold it. But nine times out of ten, if you do it correctly, it will save you from losing a lot of health by taking an accidental fall. If you want to get lots and lots of silver, go ahead and visit Tamworth Fortress. Go and find someone who wants to give you a drinking challenge here, and this is one of the few that doesn't stop after the first round. Normally when you go to some of the other towns and settlements, some of the drinking challenges will only give you one round to win 200 silver, but this one you can repeat as much as you want. Ratio wise, the time it takes for you to do other activities like maybe fishing, maybe flighting or anything else that earns you silver, this is the most efficient way because you can stand here and do it. You don't have to traipse all across the map looking for rivers that have lots of fish and you will earn repeatedly the same amount as long as you're good enough at doing this little mini game. It will take you a bit of time if you're not very good at QTR events, but let's face it, after a bit of practice, you should be able to nail this pretty easily. I don't think I have failed once in about five minutes of doing it. Not 100% sure if some of them get a bit more difficult. I've got, imagine they do. I'm pretty sure one of them nearly beat me once. So definitely go to the Tamworth one, as this one seems pretty easy. Keep repeating this and you'll eventually get enough silver to buy the world. But you'll also have the mother of all hangovers to go along with it. It's an oldie but a goodie. When you're jumping, pull out your bow and you can get a pretty much bullet slowdown time to do what you want with. Never, ever, ever sell any of your animal parts that you get. You'll find these under trade goods and you may not think you necessarily need 20 wolf fangs, but some of this stuff is much more useful for actually trading in against ingots and runes from your settlement. You just need to build the hunter's hut first, but you will never need these trinkets no one is ever going to ask you for a specific fork leaf clover or rectangular stone. Not that I've come across anyway. So you go ahead and you can make sure you sell all them. This Do this regular and you'll be surprised how much silver it racks up to over time. Now you can always buy more runes if you need them. But for sure don't hold too many that you just don't seem to be using that much. Do remember though that when you upgrade your armour and your weapons to mythic status it's going to open up a lot more rune slots. So you may still have some use for some of them. Merchants are the same in every city. It's all tied down to your level or it seems to be tied down to your settlement level. So increase your settlement level and every merchant in the world will have the same or more weapons for you to buy. This also goes for ingots and other stuff you can buy like iron and leather. Each one will have a maximum of 200 leather, 200 iron ore and usually maybe three ingots. But every time you level up, they will replenish their stores. So if you really want to buy lots of it and make sure you've always got some, always make sure you buy plenty of the stuff you need before you level up. But with so many traders out in the world and of course your own settlement trader, you shouldn't have any problems finding one to buy ingots from. A really good ability to use for catching these silver papers is the blinding rush. Time it right and it'll give you the few crucial seconds you need to pick it up before it disappears. If you've been thinking it's a bit slow upgrading your quiver or your rations, well that's because it uses fabric. 
Now the problem with fabric is it spawns pretty much randomly in smaller chests. I've yet to see it confirmed anywhere that are the specific locations and you'll normally come across it in just smaller chests or sometimes as part of raiding but not guaranteed. And there's obviously a big reason for that. They don't want you upgrading to have six portions of health or the ability to maybe have 30 arrows as that would be pretty OP, particularly for early stages of the game. So unlike carbon and nickel, you won't be able to necessarily find maps with these resources on. It doesn't look like it's gated with progression that every so often you'll open up small chest and you'll gain some fabric. One word of caution as well, if you're doing any of the altar missions where you have to give over certain resources and you'll get a reward, well some of the later ones do require some cloth. But apparently right now, if you upgrade fully your quiver and your rations, you won't ever come across any more fabric again. This may be patched by hopefully time you see this video, but otherwise, yeah, don't go ahead and upgrade both of these fully. Leave just one bar empty until you're satisfied you've done all of the offering missions you can. I've already done videos on it, but you can get a free mythological arm set pretty much from the get-go just by signing to your Amazon account right now. If you're a Twitch Prime Gaming sub, you can go ahead and link it to Ubisoft and you get all these pieces. A pretty badass shield too. But more importantly, you get this beautiful pigeon. Raids can be fun, but you kind of can rush through them a little bit quicker if you want to. Instead of having an argy-bargy at the front, go straight to the golden chest and where the doors where you need normally help from one of your clansmen, and you should be able to get him to come and trigger, even if it seems they're fighting guards way further back. There's a few exceptions to this, and if it isn't triggering that you can open these doors with help, then you may need to go and see if some of them need a bit of extra assistance. But also, don't bother rescuing the ones that are on the ground. Nothing really happened so far anyway in 50 hours of the game. I haven't had any that have actually died on me. They simply just get back in your boat whenever you're ready to depart. You'll find that by doing it this way, sometimes you won't even have to fight a lot of the guards. Your guys will eventually do it for you as you go and get all the rest of the gold and any other loot. And don't panic too much about getting lots of different John Vikings or recruiting them. I found they're pretty much the same. Didn't matter if I put massive big weapons on some of them or armor on them, the basic ones did the job. Just about. I mean, they're all pretty derpy anyway, and you'll often find that you end up taking out most of the guards on your way back. But like I said, you can indeed get most of the materials, the raid materials, without really having to worry too much about every single guard. Just a little FYI as well, if you want to get your encampment all the way up to level 6, you're going to need to get every single raid done in the game. You do get also supplies from smaller chests when you do raids too, so don't neglect them. It may seem pretty obvious, but at this stage you may be thinking that small chests aren't worth your time, and it's just the big ones you want. But you often do get some supplies in them too. And remember, this might be a way to get some of that really much needed cloth. If you find a doorway that you can't get into, the door barred is probably one of the most annoying features in the game. You'll normally find an entrance somewhere, either going through the sides of the building or finding a hole. But where we're going, we don't need holes. Equip two heavy axes and you take a look into the skill tree, find the skill that allows you to carry two heavy weapons. You'll find it in the top left, just here, going along this route. Now with it equipped, go ahead and do a heavy attack. And you can see you can break through these doors fairly easily. No more running around looking for the hole at the back. Obviously, if you're not a big fan of two-handed weapons, then that's going to be a bit of a faff equipping that every time in your skill tree. Pay attention to your dudes. If you are raiding somewhere, and for some reason you're not using your eagle vision, they'll often give you little clues about where stuff is. A top tip you guys have been telling me is to kill some of the zealots, is if they're near water, actually call in your ship and let your guys with their arrows do the job. You've also been telling me that you can almost drown them as well if you put the ship directly over them. Obviously this will only work for them that are near the water. Don't pass up the opportunity to get some quick kills. You'll be surprised how much you might need to build up in your animal fats and bones, which you can then go ahead and start trading with your trader to get more better gear. Or specifically the hunter's heart, as I mentioned earlier. I hate being Captain Obvious, but there's definitely some moments where I've maybe spent too long looking for hunting when I should have maybe just done it a little bit on the way. I definitely would be able to reap the benefits more. You don't get as much XP for killing things like sheep and livestock. However, you can sometimes get fats and stuff. So it's still definitely worth taking an arrow to a poor innocent sheep. Sure, it still may take a bit of time to get some of this stuff. 
particularly some of the later game stuff that unlocks once you've got to a certain level, you'll find that your Hunter's Hut will start selling better gear, usually after you either you upgraded your settlement or you progress through the story. But again, it's interesting how much of this you'll actually come across rapidly soon. If you really can't be traipsing around looking for the explosive jars, make sure you've got the incendiary powder trap ability. You can use that to get through any of them areas that require usually a flaming jar. In your settlement, don't worry too much about upgrading. You'll actually upgrade by doing certain raids. If you haven't worked out EVA already, that when you look in certain areas, it will tell you what kind of rewards you'll get. You'll also upgrade your settlement by completing certain sections of the story as well, or certainly go towards it. So don't spend too much time doing raids early game. Go and follow some of the story first, and then see if you're close to the level that unlocks something particularly useful, like the cartographer at level three. If you're still struggling for some of the abilities and you don't want to necessarily look up a wiki, then you go ahead and obviously use the cartographer once you unlock it. It will show you exactly where abilities are, gear maps, ingots or raw materials. And these are all for specific regions. Now it only does it for the regions you've already visited. So you can see I've still got to get two bits of gear in East Anglia. Unfortunately though, this does mean it's going to show you some of the end game gear stuff like Thor's armor sets, which you won't be able to access until you've done certain other tasks. So definitely one of the more annoying ones, but this one here, right south of the Yare River, you won't be able to get until you've defeated three of the Witch Queens. This is pretty much part of the Witch's storyline. Mini spoiler, I do believe that is Excalibur. And there we go, that is the Reddit tips and tricks tested and they all pretty much check out. I'll be adding my own, I've got some more advanced ones for maybe mid game and talking specifically about certain things like either skills, abilities and your settlements. So expect lots of that to come in and go and check out my review, I've already done Assassin's Creed 50 hours in. I will see you ratbags for more very soon.